Welcome back to Dickin' Around Outdoors. So you're the proud owner of a new piece of cast iron cookware. Congratulations. With the proper care, you've got a piece of cast iron that's going to last for generations. Heck, this old Griswold pan has been around for over 100 years, and we still use it frequently. It's a good chance that you've seen gorgeous pictures in magazines or on Instagram of cast iron being put over a blazing fire or loaded with charcoal or a fry pan that's over an intense heat and it all looks really good but in reality that preseason piece of cast iron that you just got is not ready for that in fact that's not really how you would cook with cast iron what we're going to talk about today is some of the accessories that you're going to need for your new cast iron depending on what pot you got we're going to talk about what I think you need to do before you even cook in it and we're going to talk about how to clean and take care of that pan once you do cook in it since our channel is primarily about outdoor cooking and outdoor adventure I thought I would take the first part of the video to talk about the accessories that you're going to need if you got a camp Dutch oven now, if you didn't get a Camp Dutch oven and you're not interested in this, go ahead and skip to the next section where I talk about prepping before use. So, what do I think are the mandatory accessories that you need to get to make your Camp Dutch oven cooking more enjoyable and safer? First thing, the book that comes with the Lodge Dutch ovens. So if you didn't get a Lodge, I don't know what they give you, but Lodge gives you a book, and in that book, there is a chart that tells you how many coals to put on the top and the bottom in order to achieve approximately certain cooking temperatures. So this is a great reference. This is the first thing that you need. When you start cooking on a camp oven, I would recommend that you do use charcoal. It's much easier to gauge the temperature and it allows you to learn how to cook and how the oven works before you try to go with live coals, which are a little more difficult to figure out. The second thing that I think is necessary is a lid lifter of some sort. This one is made by Lodge. This one is made, well, in fact, I don't think this one is made anymore. But the longer one is good if you're cooking on the ground. I actually use this one more than any other. But a lid lifter basically allows you to lift the lid and rotate the lid when the top of the oven is full of hot coals. So you just lift the lid up. If you're changing out your coals and need to get ash off, you can just dump it out. It allows you to rotate the lid when you're cooking. And it just gives you an ability to do this stuff without actually getting close to the hot coals. So I think that's the first thing you need. The second thing that I think you need are some kind of heat-resistant gloves. These are just leather gauntlet gloves, welding gloves. They don't have to be anything fancy but just something to keep your hands away from the hot coals and the hot iron when you're cooking. A couple other things that I think are nice to have are tongs to manage the charcoal. So you can pick up the pieces and arrange them as you want using the tongs. Now I have used a metal spoon, so tongs aren't absolutely necessary, but they sure do come in handy. And the last thing is a trivet of some sort. This happens to be from Snowpeak. But I think the hardest thing for new camp oven owners to get right is baking because it's very easy to burn the bottom of whatever you're baking. So a trivet, which allows you to actually get the oven further away from the coals, is nice to have because it allows more space and more cushion for that heat and you don't tend to burn things as easily. So that's a nice thing to have if you're going to do some baking with your new camp oven. It's a pretty good chance that your cast iron came pre-season from the manufacturer. And what that manufacturer has done is provided you a great start on getting the seasoning going on your new pot. But they haven't finished the job for you. And that's something that you're going to have to do. And I think before you cook on any new pot, you need to season it yourself. And I think you need to run it through two cycles of seasoning, more if you want, but a minimum of two cycles, and then you need to cook in it. So let me tell you what I do. 
let me show you how I season and what's worked for me so that you can get a great base built up on your seasoning. Now, in the world of cast iron, there's nothing more contentious than seasoning the pot. What oil do you use? What temperature do you use? How long do you cook it for? And debates rage online all the time about this. In my opinion, the oil doesn't really matter. It's six of one, half a dozen of another. I've used all kinds of oil. I've used flaxseed oil, which candidly was a bust for me. I use olive oil, I've used Crisco, I've used canola oil, and all of them give satisfactory results. If you've ever seen Buzzy Wax or any of these other pre-made bee wax seasoning, I make my own version of that too and use it. So how do you go about seasoning your new cast iron? Well, the first step is to take some hot soapy water, clean that pan off really, really well, dry it really, really well, and then pop it in a 225 degree oven. Now what that's going to do is it's going to thoroughly dry that piece of cast iron and it's going to open up the pores a little bit to allow the oil that you're going to put on it to creep into those pores and start creating that seasoning layer. So leave it in that oven for about 15 minutes. Then pull it out and you are going to use whatever oil you choose. You're going to put a very, very light coating of oil on this pan. You're going to wipe it around everywhere top and bottom of the lid, on the feet, inside, outside, everywhere there's cast iron, you want to cover it with oil. Then you want to take another rag or paper towel and you want to wipe off as much of that oil that you just put on as you possibly can. Get as much off as you can. Put it back in the oven, turn your heat up to 325. Let it go at 325 for 15 minutes. Then take that cast iron out again, wipe it down again, because you will see that some of that oil that you thought you got off has now come to the surface. Wipe it all off again, put it back in the oven, turn your temperature up to 425, and let that cast iron cook for an hour. Once your hour is up, turn it off and let it cool down in the oven. That's one full cycle of seasoning. Take it out, do it again, and then you should have a decent start on your seasoning. Now at that point, I would recommend cooking something in it. You don't want to just season, 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 season without cooking because the process of cooking will discover any weakness in that seasoning and help you to form a stronger bond. So what I do is I'll normally take potato skins, so if you're peeling potatoes to make anything, keep those potato skins, or an onion, and you just put this on the stove. You don't need super high heat, medium or lower is fine. Put a nice volume of oil in there and put those potato skins or those onions in and just fry them. Go ahead and cook them. Make sure if you've got a Dutch oven that some of the oil gets up on the sides and just cook those. Let it cool, then you clean it off, and then if you want to do another seasoning cycle, go ahead and do it. But I recommend after every couple cycles, cook something in it just to see how it's doing. Okay, now you've got a really well seasoned Dutch oven, you've got a great start, you're gonna cook in that oven. And I would recommend cooking fattier items first, or using a little more oil than you normally would the first few times that you use it. And you've gone ahead and you've cooked in this oven, you're all done cooking, and now it's time to clean it. So, I'm sure you've heard, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely don't use any soap. Soap is the killer for your seasoning. Well, I don't think that's true. I don't always use soap. In fact, I very rarely use soap but I'm not afraid to use soap. In fact, a lot of times when I'm using a Dutch oven at camp, 
I will fill the Dutch oven with soapy water and use that as my wash basin. So rule number one, use soap if you think you need it, but you don't need it very often. Having said that, what tools do I use to clean my cast iron? Probably the two most used tools in my arsenal are a scraper. And if you've ever cooked bacon, you know that bacon or sausage or those types of foods, anything that has any sugar in it, can leave residue on the bottom of the pan. This thing is great for getting that residue off. You just scrape the iron and that gets the big pieces off. Then I use a brush. Now this happens to be the lodge brush. When I got it, it came with a handle. The handle has broken off. So lodge, if you want to find an improvement for your brush, make the handle stronger. But the brush still works. So then you'll scrub the cast iron after you scrape off the bits, scrub it with this. Then use your dish rag to go ahead and clean off the rest of the oil. And I do that using hot water. I don't use soap. So I do that using hot water. A lot of people like the chainmail scrubbers. Now this is basically a metal scrubber, but it doesn't have any sharp edges. So you can go ahead and clean your cast iron using this without scratching and removing the seasoning. I don't necessarily use this often, but on occasion I do use it. I find these two work better. And the best weapon, I think, in the arsenal of cleaning cast iron, if you have anything on your iron that you haven't gotten off with these three items, this is your magic weapon right here. And what is this? This is just salt. And I take a jar of this when we go camping. Salt is an abrasive, but it's not a harsh abrasive. It does not ruin the seasoning of your cast iron. So the way that you use salt to clean your cast iron is you basically put the iron over some heat. So put it back over the burner, put it back over the coals. It doesn't have to be hot. In fact, it shouldn't be real hot. Just warm it up, put cooking oil into the pan, put salt into the pan, and you create a slurry. Use that to scrub your pan. Then rinse it out, wipe it out with hot water, and your pan should be good and clean and ready to go. So that's what I use to clean. I think those work wonderfully. And these things are easy to use. They're cheap to buy. Once you've got your cast iron clean, and this is important, well, two things. Always clean your cast iron after you're done using it. I know some people say just wipe it out and you're good for next time. But depending on what you've cooked and what is left in that pan, so let's say you cook bacon and you scrape it and wipe it, there's bacon grease left in that pan, which is fine if you use that pan every day. If you don't, if you take this and you set it up on a counter and you come back in a month and a half, you've likely got rancid bacon grease in that pan. So I suggest washing it hot water, soap if you need to, drying it, putting it back on the heat, and then taking a neutral vegetable oil, canola works great, Pam spray works great. Once this pan gets warm, spray it out. Sorry. Once this pan gets warm, put some oil in there, spray it with Pam, wipe it around inside and out, then wipe it again so you get all that oil that you can see off of that pan. And don't worry, there's still enough left on there to protect that pan. And that will keep the pan from rusting while it's in storage. Now, one other thing that I think you must do, hang on, is if you have a Dutch oven or anything with a lid, do not just put the lid on it and store it. That's going to trap moisture inside. That could create rust. So just take a paper towel, fold it over, set that on the rim, and then put the lid on. And what that does is that leaves enough gap in that lid to allow airflow and to keep moisture from building up inside. So if you 
Season these pans when you first get them. If you clean them well every time you use them, and if you re-season them, and by re-seasoning, I mean rubbing them with oil before putting them away, you will have a pan that over time will build up a wonderful non-stick coating and will last a lifetime without rusting. So there you have it. Those are my tips for keeping your new cast iron in great shape and preparing it for a lifetime of cooking. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you found it interesting. And as always, take care, and we'll see you outdoors.